to Silicon Valley for this year's annual Dreamforce Conference. It's simple. I'm here with what's going to be more than 130,000 others in a new tech pilgrimage, trying to figure out what could be the next big technological game changer from any of the incredible companies presenting at this cloud conclave. And that's a big reason why I'm talking to Mark Benioff. He's the master of ceremonies here at Dreamforce. Mark, you've always told me to come out because you said that, I, that many of us, including me, don't get the new economy. This is Woodstock for the new economy? What is this? Well, Jim, I don't know if it's Woodstock for the new economy, but we do have the music, that's for sure. Yeah, we're we're even going to have Neil Young tomorrow. But let Yo, me tell you, you didn't tell me that? Well, if we're going to have Woodstock. Right. But hey, let me tell you something what's exciting is that our whole world is changing here, you know, and you, you can feel it. You can. That, that's why I like and so thrilled that you're here. You have to be here to really see that this is not just you know, our old tech software industry, right. this is a new industry. A lot of new companies, 350 companies presenting here, 1,100 sessions, 130,000 people who are coming in for those sessions, plus everybody else online. That doesn't include the online viewership. Right. So it's, it's pretty amazing what's going on. Well, I've been speaking one executive after another, and they either got in the business because of some conversation you have with them, or because of your platform, realizing that they could upend and have a disruptive technology, whether it be Viva, whether it be Sandy Kurtzig. I mean, you, these people have decided that they can do something against the old guard because of what you've built. Well, the power is in our platform, you're absolutely right, which allows others to be successful, and honestly, that's our goal. You know, We have a motto, it's not enough for us to be successful, we want others to be successful too. That, that's the ultimate success. All right, well, you, you win know. new business, and I know that here, I saw Scott Dorsey from Exactar, I should tell you that. How's that thriving with you now, under yeah. your umbrella? He had a monster quarter with I us, knew we monster did. quarter. I knew we would. And it's more than just email, right? It's way more than email. It's a whole infrastructure. Well, you know, you know, you know the new PlayStation 4 just launched? Yeah. We're going to be featuring them tomorrow in our keynote. He's driving the whole back end, the ability to market to all those customers. You know, of course, you have to email with them, but you also have to manage the whole connected relationship. And that, that's really the power of exact now, I, I always ask people to go listen to the speeches. The speech are made, whether from Burberry, who tells me that they love your G. Safeway loves you. Safeway loves us. We have a great new relationship with Safeway, with Exact Target, actually. And that, that's a, you know, they have a phenomenal customer database. But how do they really get you all the information you need so that you can take your relationship with Safeway to another level? That's what Exact Target's well, going to do. Well, I mean, is it uh, Affinity? Is it Blackhawk? The, the, the card? The Affinity card? Or is it just the actual store and the produce? It's better than that. Jim, you know, you could show up in their store. You could go to their website. You could be in an email. You, you could be in a pop-up store. You could even be by their delivery van. Wherever you are, Safeway is going to have a one-to-one -one relationship with you. They're going to know who you are, and Exact Target is going to help them line you up to Safeway wherever that customer point is. And there are so many customer points that, that that's what's changed. That's what's exciting for Safeway. Is this world different from the rest of the world? I do not hear people talk about sequester and Washington and bickering. I don't hear people talking about taper and new Federal Reserve. Is this just a parallel universe that has to do with just ingenuity and innovation? This is a cult of innovation. Right. You know, we, we're here to try to create things and and, and and yeah, those two guys are creating things. Oh, Chatty and Sassy. Oh yeah, right. Of course, I Sassy, Sassy, software as a service. And <laughs> Chatty, based right, on our chat. core platform, I, I Chatty chat. platform. Chat. I like Chat. And you know, but yes, it's a cult of innovation. That, that this idea that people want to create new things. Why is that important? In our industry, things are always getting lower cost right. and easier to use. So you're either riding that innovation curve or you're not. Innovation is a continuum. It's always happening. So you know what happens when companies stop innovating. Eventually, right. the, the product no longer meets right. the market. The idea is keep going, keep innovating, keep changing, transforming, keep hitting the reset button. That's the power. But one of the things that I've heard from some people who are much more, like Sandra, Sandy, hero of mine from Ask, point She's blank my just, hero too. Well, point blank says, yeah. look, uh, we're out to defeat Oracle, okay? But then you have a partnership with Oracle. Yeah. I mean, you are, sure. are you trying to be Switzerland? I mean, uh, Switzerland did win in the end in some ways. We want everyone to move to the cloud. Okay. We want everyone to move into a market that we dominate because when, when they do, we still dominate the market, but they become subordinate. You see that with Oracle's cloud revenues, which are actually quite pathetic. They, they should be superior to ours, but they're not. They're, they're, but if they were inferior. superior, then the rest of their business would be cut to ribbons. No? Well, I don't think so, but they do, and that's Two the point. And that's why, right. well, okay. see, that, that's how they, people get brainwashed. 
Right. That's the hypnosis. That's the crazy part. People will all of a sudden say, well, we can't go cloud, it'll destroy our business. Right. But the reality right. is if you don't go cloud, that will destroy your business. And those CEOs who make those mistakes, we see Steve Ballmer exiting Microsoft. Why? He didn't go social, he didn't go mobile, he didn't go cloud, he didn't go connected. He said he was going oh, to, okay. he told us he was going to, but he didn't. Now, the reason that you read the Wall Street Journal right. this weekend, yes. what did he say? Searching. What did he say? He's well, standing you know what? impediment of progress. Well, he says he's a representative of the past. Right. Okay, Dreamforce is a representative of the future. Okay. Well, why, okay, let's, put it, let's go big. Why was the president not social, mobile, cloud for healthcare? And why didn't he just turn to you? Or why didn't you tell him how to do it? He was for his campaign, and then he didn't do it in this agency. So why didn't I don't you just take why. it over? Well, we're busy here, Jim. You didn't even <laughs> so, offer? You didn't even offer? We did. We offered to do it for free. We offered to run it for free for the next five years, rebuild it for free. But, you know, it's... too expensive for the Well, I think it's hard for them to process what does that mean. And look, we're... But Sam, it was a customer relations Jim, problem. Was it not? It is. Wasn't it the customer? It the customer it's was forgotten. Spot. It's our sweet spot. But you know what? San Francisco's a long way from Washington, D.C., Maybe it's okay. good that way. Well, he's coming here next week, so maybe we can talk to him All and let right. him know. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mark Benioff, for being a gracious host, chairman and CEO of Salesforce.com. Congratulations on a great quarter and Thanks, for what Dave. you've accomplished. Great to see you. <laughs>